this is what it comes down to for Great Britain. 80 years since they won the gold medal at a Winter Olympics and 60 years since there was a Winter Olympics right here in this very building. They now need to beat the Italians to go through to the final qualifying for the 2018 Winter Olympics. Let's catch the game highlights now with Seth Bennett. Destiny and Olympic hopes will all be sorted out over the next two and a half hours here in Cortina. Great Britain haven't made it to an Olympic Games since 1948. However, four years ago, they went to Japan and they beat the host in the final game to make it through to final qualifying in Latvia. Can they do the same thing here in Cortina? Daniel Frank taken out on the boards and now an opportunity to clear away and Robert Lakovic, he's off at the races here, goes into the left wing corner, spins off his man, knees out, out in front, shot comes, second chance penalty coming, Tate denied and a slashing call means that having survived that period of pressure, GB are back on the power play, it's nil-nil, 5.32 gone. Here is Shields. Works it down low, there's a quick challenge on the stick of Peacock. There's an Italian player who goes down. Italy wants a penalty, nothing coming. Here's O'Connor, one time, lets it go, rebound! Doesn't fall to the stick of Peacock, but GB hold in again. Good from O'Connor, took it out of the air there. Clark, rink wide to Shields, has to take the pass again, rebound comes out. Myers is there, he's kicking at it. And there's words between Myers and the netminder and then stepping in to have his own words is Alexander Egger. And the referee may be coming to give more penalties here. A two plus two high sticking penalty coming. And I think it's against Great Britain, you know. Oh my goodness, there's a blood all over the face of the Italian player on the far side. It's Nicolas uh, Plastino. Borgatello to Egger again. He collects on the hash marks on the right-hand side. That's halfway up, if you like, between the goal line and the blue line. Egger is the one who's in control. Oh, control as Italy send this one in. Borgatello with a blast from the blue line. And it's Italy who opened the scoring. A power play goal. GB just found themselves a little deep in the zone. And Borgatello let fly, and it's Italy 1, Great Britain 0. I think that might have taken a deflection of one of GB's players there. Yeah, it went off of Mark Garside's stick just on its way through. I mean, it was a, it was a routine save for Bounsey, but because it took that deflection, it just went straight above his shoulder. The power play continues for another 20 seconds. Italy leading by a goal to nil, they want more. Borgatello wants the one-timer, shoots wide of the net, play still alive though, bounces down, what a stop! Oh, highlight real save, but then it pops out! And somehow Italy poke it home, GB are incensed! But the referee points to centre ice. And with 11 seconds remaining on the power play, Italy have doubled their lead and GB's Olympic dreams lie in tatters. Italy 2, Great Britain 0. It seemed like Bouncy was on top of that puck, but it was right underneath him, and I think everybody lost sight of it a little bit. It was under his arm as he flopped to make the save, and the Italian player just kept poking away at it and managed to push it in the net. GB intercept with Jonathan Phillips. Plastino wins it back, though, and then Peacock gives him a bump. And GB win possession back. GB just notching up the physical activity out there right now. Costner snaps it. Great goal. Wonderful finish. And Great Britain now trail by three. It's turning out to be a disastrous first period. But that was a snapshot of some velocity. Costner had traffic in front of him. And Ben Bounds was beaten high above that block aside. May have just taken a deflection on the way through. But Great Britain are in a huge, huge hole here. As Italy put this one home, straight from the face-off. Borgatello, influential again. And Great Britain's Olympic hopes are expiring in a hurry.
in Cortina on a Sunday night. 4.04 remaining in the second period and Great Britain now trail by four. Garside goes in on the four check. He'd dearly love to add another one. He's closing in on Tony Hand's record as well. And Great Britain are going to get a power play. It's a holding call. Really is infuriating when you're watching a side that's just battling so hard with itself. And that's where Great Britain are at the moment. Matty Davis finds Lakovic. Lakovic goes to the net, comes out in front. Chance and a goal! Tips in front! Ashley Tate! What? Matthew Matt Myers crouch, crouches. He's going to try and draw this back on the backhand side. It's uh, held in by O'Connor. Sets this one. Goal! David Clark on the deflection. It's a power play mark for GB and the deficit's cut in two. And with a shade under 15 to go, can GB produce a miraculous comeback? Italy for GB2. Well, that's exactly what we needed right there. We've got 15 minutes left and two goals is not unachievable. It looked like they, uh, the Italian team thought they had a clearance, but Ben O'Connor picked the puck out of the air on the blue line. The Italian team and the defensemen were already moving up ice and they completely left David Clark in front of the net by himself and he just tipped it in. Costner, Daniel Costner, chance towards the back door. But Great Britain were able to deal with Larkin who was rushing in the defenseman. Lee battles on the boards again. Foot will break, Shields won't get there first. To the top it goes and the shot all the way through and Italy answer back with a fifth. Great Britain caught deep in their zone and Italy with another shot from a pie. Alexander Gellert with a shot. And that surely now sees them through. And Great Britain's Olympic hopes are done and dusted. 12.37 to go. It's Italy 5, Great Britain 2. Peacock, Shields and Clark. There are a lot of goals out there if GB can just set a play going. Peacock behind the net. Quick stick comes in from Italy. Peacock wants to swing it back towards the blue line. Finds Clark. Through traffic it goes. Immediately trying to get in is Lee. O'Connor finds Clark again on the right side. Back to O'Connor. O'Connor goes down low. Quick shot comes through. There's Peacock in front. Doesn't fall to his stick just in time. And then Italy will bring this one away. And Italy will have a chance to convert into an unguarded net. Ramosa scores the goal. Signed, sealed and delivered. Great Britain's Olympic hopes are all over for another term. And Italy will march on. Oh, you know what, they, they were better than us. They out-battled us in some areas. We tried. Do you know what I mean? What hard? What do you think, Tommy? I thought the one-on-one -on -one battles were key at times. Our races are you know, in front of the net, helping out goals in and stuff like that. We, yeah. we should have done better in those areas. Do you think it shows the level that, that GB have got to aspire to? 100%, for sure. Um, I think consistently we have to play at a higher level and, you know, it's done now. There's nothing we can get it back. And how are GB going to get to that level? I don't know, we just need to work harder together and it's a younger team. There's a lot of changes in this team, the guys pulling out. But I thought the guys have worked hard and uh, there, was a lot of, there was some good stuff through the week and then there's some other things that didn't go so well for us, but, you know, we tried. Tell me what it probably has done. It's been great preparation for a, a World Championship tournament, which is only six weeks away. GB don't normally get these quality games this close to a tournament, so, so that, in, in some ways, it has been good. No, I think that's really important. It gives us some good preparation, some, some good video to work with, and you know, some parents that we hope to improve on. And where can, can GB go from now? I mean, it's around the corner, that World Championship. You got the silver last year. Is, are you going for gold to Croatia? I think we've got to we've got to go and do uh, or, or aim for the highest position possible, and that has to be gold. You know, we've got a team that are, are good on the day, and, and they battle extremely hard and an honest punch. So uh, yeah, it's got to be a gold target. And just quickly, if you could sum up the, the tournament as a whole, I'll, I'll throw to Pete. Y your thoughts on y the way GB were in the tournament over the three games? How you were in the three games? Yeah, you know what? The first two games we scored a lot of goals, they were a bit inconsistent. I thought today we. Five and five, we looked as if we were solid, but we never really created a lot of offense. We were tough to break down. Then the last few we came a bit hard, we tried, and we got the pucks to the net. There was a few bounce right in our way, but you know what? We got to move forward now. 
done now. We can get it back, and we just have to come back. And as you said, in six weeks, we with games against Poland again, we've got a training camp, and you know we'll come back and go to Croatia and try and go one better this time. GB captain Jonathan Phillips. Jonathan, you you gave it all you could. How do you assess that final performance? Yeah, we just uh, I think I think we lost focus a little bit with the. With the penalties, you know, I think there was a few which, which which weren't really fair on us. But at the end of the day, I think we, I think we could have refocused a bit better. And uh, I think we just gave him a little bit too much respect in the first period. There, we, um, I think, with our energy and the way we skate, I think I think we could have gone at, at, at them. I think I think we respect them a bit too much. And um, as I said, with our energy and our kind of speed, um, I think I think we were a bit hesitant in that first period. And we just three goals down, we we just couldn't get it back. Five on five, though, and there's rarely any five on five. But you did seem to match them. We did, um, and you know, I think once once we got the puck deep, and just with our with our little soft chips in the soft areas, I, th I think we got two guys going. We, we had our four check going strong then, and um, but you know, we at the end of the day, we 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 were in the, the penalty box too long. Steve Lee uh, still with us alongside uh, Jonathan. W what can you learn from this tournament, Steve? Well, we just have to respect our opponents. I mean, it's. Coming here tonight and actually playing the team that we played, they was fast, they was strong, they moved the puck really well. I mean, preparation, they had a lot, so we everybody did as, as much as they possibly could and uh, it wasn't a thing about hard work, everybody worked hard tonight, it was just a couple of, a couple of errors here and there and they capitalised on it. I mentioned to the coaching staff at, at the final Hooter, what it has done is it's been good preparation for a world championship and GB don't normally get these sort of quality games so close to a championship. No, it's definitely good. We've been here for a week now, a couple of practice in Coventry come here. So it's getting used to playing with each other as well and it'll put us in good stead for when the world championships do come around. Thank you, Steve. Just, just one more question for you, Jonathan. There's a big togetherness about this GB side. Will you come again and come strong from this, do you think? Yeah, definitely. I, th you know, I think that's the one good thing with our team is um, our kind of passion and our drive. And, and I, th I don't think we'll ever lose that. Um, you know, tournaments like this is just going to make us um, make us stronger and, and make that want to, to progress more. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it hurts right now, but I, th I think, um, you know, the boys will be... You know, ready to go and, and, and looking forward to the World Championships. Okay, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So the Olympic dream is over for Great Britain at the pre-qualifying stage. They won't be going through to the next round and it is Italy. Congratulations to them. They will go through to the final qualifiers for the 2018 Olympics and they'll be going to Norway in early September. Seth Bennett commentated on the game for BBC Radio 5 Live Sports Extra. Did GB do it to themselves with too many penalties or can they be a little bit aggrieved with overzealous officiating. They will feel aggrieved, there's no doubt about that. Whether they should or not is a different question. This is international hockey and, and the rules are ever so slightly differently applied. And I think that the reality in all of this is that, that Great Britain were a bit unfortunate. They gave away an accidental to high stick. It was a two plus two penalty. There was blood dripping off the face of the player. It's not one really that you can argue the officials gave it. They scored two power play goals on that, and that set the tone for the rest of the game. From there, Great Britain were just scrabbling. You know, they were running around just to try and stay in the game. And then they took more penalties. Italy continued to, to make them pay on the power play. And it just it was just a night where they didn't execute. You know, we talked about this before the game. What do we say? Great Britain had to be really, really disciplined and they had to ex execute in all areas of the ice. Frustration got to them, and it meant six foot passes weren't going tape to tape, it meant the puck. When it wobbled and bobbled, it bobbled over a stick. It was one of those nights. And is that acceptable? Well, I think they'll feel disappointed that, that they didn't give Italy a closer run because they are better, they're a better team than the scoreline in the end on that scoreboard suggests. What positives will Pete and the coaching staff and the team take from what's happened here over the last four days? Well, I think they'll be happy that they found some goal scoring in all of the games you know they, they've managed to put up 14 goals across the three games in this tournament they need to take that into the world championships i think he'll have a better idea about some of his younger players he got a first real look at, at ben davies close up and, uh, and personal didn't he in a in a senior tournament like this i think jonathan boxhill again has gone from strength to strength i think matty davis in his second international tournament he's still very much a, a fledgling player at this level 
and he, I think he was devoid of confidence coming in. Looking at him, I think that he's a player who, again, has really shown something. That pass for the power play goal was something that was a bit special, you know, feeding it back to the blue line from where he was. So I think he learned that about his side. I think defensively, I think he still has issues that he'll want to work out in the development of particularly the, the four, five and, and six in that defensive unit. But I think Stevie Lee offers so much. Remember, he wasn't there at the World Championship last time around. And there's players still to come back into this squad. You know, this won't be the group that goes to the World Championships in Croatia. So I think there are all of those things. Probably the best part of it, though, is he's had a chance to spend seven days with his players. Seven days where he's been in charge, seven days where he's worked with them on a daily basis. And, and that maybe is, is the greatest gift he can take from this tournament. And especially because it's World Championships in, in what, six weeks? And I've said this a couple of times already in interviews. GB don't get this sort of preparation. So I know they're disappointed and that they've not made it through to the next stage. But what it can do, it can set them up nicely for a promotion bid to the Division 1A of the World Championship. Absolutely. And they've got to take this experience. Yeah, they're going to be disappointed. There's going to be a lot of heads down and there'll be a bit of anger and frustration in that locker room right now. But in truth... You know, did they expect to come and skate to a comfortable victory over Italy tonight? No. You know, they, they were always second favourites coming into this tournament. They've done what was expected of them. The disappointment was that maybe they didn't do themselves justice in this final game. And you know what? There's, there, there probably wasn't a great 60-minute performance across all three games, if we're being brutally honest about things. So that's something to work on for, for Great Britain. This, though, is an all-too-familiar story, isn't it? You know... Close enough, but not quite close enough. We go back to the World Championships last year. Mm. comes down to the final game. They just didn't have enough to get it done. And you hope at some point that, that those experiences are going to start to kick in and the players are going to come through the other side of them. Um, you know, tonight, a tough game against a, a good Italy team who, who took their chances. They did what they had to do. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Seth, for thank joining you. us. It's been great being out here and working with you. And before I finish, I've just got a, a few thank yous, as always. There's people who, behind the cameras, you don't get to see. Dave Burnham and, and Colin Lawson, who, who work really hard to, to bring you the pictures and the videos from this tournament. And then I think a special mention for the off-ice staff here in Cortina, the Cortina officials, the secretary and the president. We've been warmly welcomed here, and, and nothing that we asked was, was ever turned down. We, we were here at the rink early. We could be here when we wanted. We went to film the Olympic flame. We've been very welcomed and we've been very honoured to, to work in this and, and, and be in this famous old ring. But that's it. I'm sorry we can't bring you good news on the final day, but we will see you in about six weeks' time in the World Championships in Croatia. But behind my shoulder, you can just hear cheers and that's because the players are going up to the GB Supporters Club uh, and the GB fans who, can I say, were fantastic all week long. And, and before we, we finish, they were, again, fabulous. No, they were brilliant, weren't they? And that was acknowledged on the ice by the, the local organising committee at the end of the tournament. They brought colour, they brought sound, they brought a vitality to this tournament. They're going to do the same thing in Zagreb. Uh, and I think, you know, it's not just us that appreciate it and the, and the local people here, but, but also those players as well. They know that, that everybody is part of a unit. You know, they say they're the fifth line and they've fulfilled those fifth line duties particularly well at this tournament. I think the rink is closing down. That's enough. <laughs> That's Chop. it. Chop it away. I feel the Oscar music should come on. <laughs> but they'll be going through their players of the tournament and the players will then mingle for a short while, uh, which if you've never been to one, it is great because the players come out at the end of their tournament and whether they've won or lost or what they've done, they just spend time with the fans. But that's it. We'll see you in a few weeks, I'm sure. And that's it for this one, Ice Soccer UK TV, in association with McDonald's. <laughs>